how to make an OpenVPN access server with web-based user interface UI using DigitalOcean's one-click install marketplace applications. We'll first begin by creating an OpenVPN access server on a virtual private server or VPS. The VPS host provider I'm going to be using in this video is called DigitalOcean. While our OpenVPN access server is being created, we'll then install the OpenVPN Connect client. This is the client that we'll use to connect to our OpenVPN access server. We'll then install Putty, which is an SSH client used to log into our OpenVPN access server to configure it. We will then generate the OpenVPN.OVPN configuration profiles and then use these profiles to connect to our OpenVPN server. We'll then check our IP address using whatismyipaddress.com. If OpenVPN is working correctly, our IP address should be masked and the DigitalOcean server IP should be displayed here instead. Okay, so let's begin. First, navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link to DigitalOcean. It will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their server free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so that you can click on it for your convenience. Once here, we'll need to create a new DigitalOcean account. You can either sign up by email, GitHub, or with your Google account. Now I've already created a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on sign in. Once you have created your DigitalOcean account and you're also signed in, you'll be taken to your projects dashboard. Look for the button that says create and click on it. Click on droplets, which is what DigitalOcean calls its cloud servers. Next, you'll need to choose a region for your droplet. I'm going to be going with Germany for this video demonstration. You can choose any of the regions from this list. Scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. Click on the Marketplace tab. You should then see OpenVPN Access Server. If you don't see it, then navigate to this search box and type in OpenVPN. You'll then see the OpenVPN Access Server, which allows you to run your own OpenVPN server with web-based interface. Click on this to select it. Once done, the OpenVPN Access Server will be highlighted, meaning it has been selected. Scroll down until you see where it says choose size. Droplet type, go with the shared CPU. So click on basic if it already isn't selected. Scroll down further until you see CPU options. Click on regular, which comes with a disk type SSD. It's cheaper of the three. Now, if you're hosting your OpenVPN access server for you or your devices and a couple of friends or family members, then you can go with a $6 a month plan, which is what I'm going to be going with. If you're going to be hosting more people on your OpenVPN server, then you may consider the $12 a month plan, which essentially doubles the specs of the $6 a month plan. The $6 a month plan comes with one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabyte SSD disk storage, and a terabyte of bandwidth transfer. Once you've selected your plan, scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Click on password and create your root password. Make sure your password meets all the password requirements. Scroll down to the very bottom until you see where it says host name. Give your droplet an identifying name by deleting the pre-typed information in here and then enter in your droplet name. So I'm going to call my droplet openvpn-server. Once you've chosen a name, click on Create Droplet. DigitalOcean will then begin creating your OpenVPN access server. While that's being created, I'm going to click on my other tab here. You're going to open up another tab and navigate to openvpn.net slash client. Once you're here, look for the OpenVPN client that's compatible with your operating system. You can choose between Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and Chrome OS. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on Windows, and then I'm going to click on Download OpenVPN Connect for Windows. The client will then be downloaded. Once complete, navigate to the top right hand corner and click on the openvpn connect.exe file. So I'm just going to click on it to open it. This will then start the Windows installer for OpenVPN. Click on next in the setup wizard, read through the end user license agreement. And then if you accept, click on I accept all terms in this license agreement and click on next. Finally, click on install. If you're on Windows like myself, you'll be greeted with the user account control. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You can choose no or yes. If you want to install OpenVPN connect, you'll need to click on yes. Once OpenVPN VPN Connect client has been installed, it will open up immediately and greet you with the OpenVPN Inc. data collection, use and retention policy. You can read through it in your own time and if you agree, just click on agree. You can now minimize the OpenVPN Connect client for the time being. We'll get back to that later when we're ready to connect after setting up our OpenVPN access server. Click on finish to exit out of the OpenVPN Connect setup. Let's check on the progress of our OpenVPN Connect server. So I'm just going to go back to the DigitalOcean project dashboard to see if our droplet is up and running. And as you can see, by the green status symbol, our droplet is now active. And here is our IP address. To the right of our IP address, click on copy to copy it to your clipboard. Next, open up another tab and navigate to putty.org. Once you're here, click on download putty. Putty is the SSH 
client we're going to be using to log in and configure our OpenVPN access server. Look for the installers and select the relevant PuTTY installer for your OS. I'm on Windows, so I'll be going with the Windows 64 bit. If PuTTY isn't compatible with your operating system, you'll need to download an alternative SSH client. Now, I'm not going to take you through the installation of PuTTY as I already have a step-by-step -step video which takes you through this process. I'll put this video's link in this video's description below and as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video. Minimize your browser to be taken to your desktop. Once you're here, look for the PuTTY shortcut. If you don't see it, then you'll need to search for the PuTTY program in your search box and then open up PuTTY. I'm simply going to double click on PuTTY to open it. In the hostname or IP address section, we're going to paste in our Digital Ocean Droplets IP address. So I'm just going to click on this box here and I'm going to paste it in. Once done, click on open. You'll then be greeted with the PuTTY security alert, which tells you that the host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now, of course, we know that this is our Digital Ocean Droplet. So we have three options. You can click on cancel, connect once or accept. I'm going to click on accept as I would like to log into my OpenVPN access server. Maximize the PuTTY terminal window for better viewing. At the top left, it says login as. We're going to be logging in as root. So type root, hit enter on your keyboard and type in the root password of your digital ocean droplet that you just created. Once you've typed in your password, hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be greeted with the open access server and user license agreement. If you agree to it, just simply type yes in the terminal window and hit enter on your keyboard. Will this be a primary access server node? Enter no to configure as a backup or standby. Press enter for default yes. I'm going to press enter. Please specify the network interface and IP address to be used by the admin web UI or interfaces 0.0.0.0 ETH O and then your droplets IP address ETH 0 10.19.0.5 or ETH1 which is 10.114.0.2. You have options from 1 to 4 so it says please enter the option number from the list from 1 to 4. Press enter for default which is 1 so that's going to be all interfaces so I'm just going to hit enter. I'll roll with that. What public private type algorithms do you want to use for the OpenVPN CA? Recommended choices. RSA, maximum compatibility, SCEP, SECP 384R1, elliptic curve, higher security than RSA, allows faster connection setup and smaller user profile files. Show all shows all options, including non-recommended algorithms. Press enter for default, which is RSA. So I'm going to go with RSA. So I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. What key size do you want to use for the certificates? Key size should be between 2048 and 4096. Press enter for the default, which is 2048. I'm going to press enter. What public private type algorithms do you want to use for the self-signed web certificate? Recommended choices, RSA, SECP and show all. Press enter for the default RSA. So I'm going to go with RSA. So I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. What size do you want to use for the certificates? Key size should be between 2048 and 4096. Again, I'm just going to roll with 2048. So I'm going to press enter for the default. Please specify the port number for the admin web UI. Press enter for the default, which is 943. So I'm going to press enter. Please specify the TCP port number for the OpenVPN daemon. Press enter for the default 443. So I'm going to press enter. Should client's traffic be routed by default through the VPN? Press enter for the default, which is yes. I'm going to press enter. Should client's DNS traffic be routed by default? through the VPN. Press enter for default yes. So I'm going to press enter. Should private subnets be accessible to clients by default? Press enter for default, which is yes. I'm going to go with enter. Do you wish to log into the admin UI as OpenVPN? Now you can type your username for the admin UI in here if you want. However, I'm going to be going with a default, which is going to be OpenVPN. So I'm going to press enter for yes. Type a password for the OpenVPN account. If left blank, a random password will be generated. So you can enter your password for the OpenVPN access server admin UI. I'm going to allow the OpenVPN access server to generate me one. So I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard to leave it blank. And as you can see, it says, please remember this password and it gives you your generated password. You can save this now or later after we've completed the setup, it will then remind you of your password and the links for accessing the admin web UI. Please specify your activation key or leave blank to specify later. I'm going to leave it blank, so I'm just going to hit enter. The OpenVPN access server will then begin setting up. I'll be back with you once the setup process has been completed and we've got the OpenVPN access server installed. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, it says initial configuration complete. You can now continue configuring OpenVPN access server by directing your web browser to this URL address. So this is the URL address for the admin, which is going to be you. During normal preparation, OpenVPN AS, which is access server, can be accessed via the URLs for admin UI, it's the same link, which is here. For the client UI, the link is here. It's basically the same without slash admin. To log in, please use the OpenVPN account with the following password that was generated. So I'm just going to copy this crucial information here from where it says admin UI all the way down 
to the password. To do this, I'm simply going to left click and highlight it all. This will automatically copy the highlighted information to your clipboard. I'm going to minimize my terminal window here to be taken to my desktop, and I'm going to open up Notepad. You can open up any text editor, maximize the window, right click and paste. And there we go, we've got the admin UI link, the client UI link, which you'll give to people so that they can download their .ovpn client profiles, and the password that was generated for the OpenVPN username, which is the admin account. Open back up the putty terminal window, and close it as we no longer need it. We'll then be greeted with the putty exit confirmation. Are you sure you want to close this session? Click on OK. Now let's configure the OpenVPN access server further by adding and creating a client.ovpn profile. So look for where it says admin UI and copy this link by highlighting it. Right click click on copy. Open back up your browser, open up another tab and paste in the admin link, hit enter. If you're on Google Chrome like myself, you may see the following web page, which says your connection is not private. And this is normal because our OpenVPN access server does not have an SSL certificate for HTTPS. So to go to the OpenVPN web UI, click on advanced and then click on proceed to and then your droplets IP address. So I'm going to click on that to proceed. And there we go. We're on our OpenVPN access server admin page. We need to enter the username, which is going to be OpenVPN and our password is going to be the generated password. So I'm just going to open up my text document here. I'm going to copy the in quotation marks password to highlight it. I'm going to right click and click on copy. I'm going to open up my browser and I'm going to right click and paste in the OpenVPN admin password. Now, if you've created your own password when you were prompted, you could just enter it in here and then click on sign in. You'll then see the open access server and user license agreement, reiterate it in your own time. And if you agree, click on agree. We'll now be on the OpenVPN access servers dashboard specifically in the activation manager. We don't need to be in here. We in fact need to be in the user management side. So look towards the left of the OpenVPN access server, find user management, click on the drop down arrow, and then look for where it says user permissions. Click on user permissions. You'll then be able to see all the usernames on your OpenVPN access server. Currently, we only have the OpenVPN username. And as you can see, this is our admin client. To add a new username, look for where it says new username and click on the text box and enter a username for your client. So I'm going to call my client client one. Once you've chosen a name, look towards the right hand side. First, let's start off with more settings. So click on the pencil icon here for client one, and then we'll need to pick a local password. This password will be used by the client to log in to the OpenVPN access server web UI, and also used to connect to your OpenVPN server using the OpenVPN connect client, if you don't choose an auto login profile. So I'm just going to click on this text box and give client one a password. So I'm just going to type in the password here. There's even more settings that you can play with if you want, but I'm not going to touch those in this video. However, you can in your own time. Next, you have the option of checkmarking this box to make the new username an admin. I'm not going to checkmark this box as I already have a username with admin privileges. Next is allow auto login. If you checkmark this box, it will allow automatic login for this username, which means when they're connecting to your OpenVPN AS server using the OpenVPN Connect client, they won't need to enter the local password that you've entered in in here. Actually, the OpenVPN access server, when allow auto login is checkmarked, will generate two .ovpn profiles files. One will allow you to auto log in and the other will require the local password. You can also deny access by clicking on this box to check mark it and delete the username of a profile that you have already created. Now all that's left to do is to confirm the changes we have made by scrolling to the bottom and clicking on save settings. User permissions changed. User client one added. Press the button below to propagate the changes to the running server. So I'm going to click on update running server. Running server updated. The relevant components of the server have been restarted to activate the changes made to the active profile. And there we go, client one has been added to our username list. And now you can add another username to your OpenVPN access server and repeat the process that we have just gone through for each new client and new device that you want to add. Once you finish configuring your user permissions and other user management settings, you can close out of your OpenVPN access server admin web UI by closing the tab. Open back up your text document. Look for where it says client UI and copy the client UI link. By highlighting it, right clicking on it and clicking on copy to copy it to your clipboard. I'm now going to demonstrate what the client sees when they log into our OpenVPN access server web UI. Open back up your browser, open up another tab, which I already have open, right click and paste in the client UI address and hit enter on your keyboard to navigate to that URL address. The client will then need to type in the client username and client password that you gave to them. So in my case, I'm going to be client one. And for my password, I'm just going to enter that in now. Once done, click on sign in. Great. So I'm now logged into the OpenVPN access server client web UI. 
here you'll be able to download the OpenVPN Connect client that's relevant for your OS. We have already downloaded and installed the OpenVPN Connect client. You might ask, why didn't we just download the OpenVPN Connect client from here? These ones that are displayed here are actually outdated versions of the OpenVPN Connect client. And that's the main reason. We want to have the latest OpenVPN Connect client when we're connecting to our OpenVPN access server. Scroll down until you see where it says available connection profiles. These two profiles here, in my case, I have two because one is a locked profile, which means it requires the local password that you will be given the client. An auto login profile is a profile that you can log in without using the local password. It's the text box that you check marked earlier in the admin web UI. So first let's start off by downloading the user locked profile. So click on this hyperlink text here. The download should then start. And as you can see, it has been downloaded called profile-3.ovpn. I'm going to click on show in folder here to see it in my downloads. So this is an OVPN profile file. We're going to need to add this profile to our OpenVPN Connect client. So I'm just going to open up the OpenVPN Connect client. By default, you'll be on the URL tab. Click on the upload file tab and drag and drop to upload the .ovpn profile. So I'm just going to left click on profile-3. I'm going to drag it in and then I'm going to let go of my left click to import the profile to the OpenVPN Connect client. Choose a profile name. So I'm going to delete everything here except client1. Server host name we can't change and the username is locked. You can choose to save the password if you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on connect. It will then ask you to enter the password for client one. So I'm going to enter in the password now for client one and then I'm going to click on OK. You'll then be connected to your OpenVPN server. You can see your connection status below and the packets received. And if you scroll down further, you can get more information. Great. So now we're connected. Let's check if our IP address is indeed masked. So I'm just going to open back up my browser, navigate to my other tab here. You're going to open up another tab and navigate to whatismyipaddress.com. Hit enter on your keyboard. And then if you look to where it says my IP address is for the IPv4 address, you should see your new masked IP address, which in my case is 134.209.229.135. And if I go to my DigitalOcean Droplets Projects dashboard and look at my Droplets IP address for my OpenVPN access server, it matches what's displayed in whatismyipaddress.com, 134.209.229.135. And that's exactly the same. Great. So now we know our OpenVPN VPN Connect client is working correctly. Now I want to show you the auto login.ovpn profile. So I'm going to open back up the OpenVPN Connect client. I'm going to click on the toggle to start the disconnection process. And I'm going to click on confirm to disconnect the VPN. I'm now going to go back to the OpenVPN access server client page and underneath available connection profiles, I'm going to click on auto login profile. So I'm going to left click on it and then the download will start. And if I look to my browser's downloads, it says profile-4.ovpn. I'm going to click on show in folder. I'm going to open back up the OpenVPN Connect client. I'm going to click on the plus symbol, upload file, and I'm going to drag in the profile four into this box here to upload it. I'm going to delete some of the profile names pre-typed information in here until it says client one. And then I'm going to type dash auto dash log, just so we know that this is an auto login profile. Then I'm going to click on connect. And there we go. The auto login client.ovpn profile didn't require us to put in the local password for our client. It just connected us straight away. Great. So that concludes this video on how to install OpenVPN access server with web-based UI on DigitalOcean Ubuntu VPS, a self-hosted VPN. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so